Hi, everybody, and welcome to All Games No Masters, the GM list branch of. Hold on, I have my prompter here to tell me what to say. Uh, the GM list branch of the RPG Exploration so uh, Society with Saving Throws Show. Welcome to the Society Explorers. Um, we are so excited to be here today, uh, continuing our playthroughs of GM list uh, TTRPGs. Uh, and uh, before we move on to what it is we will be playing today. First of all, we must acknowledge that there's an adorable dog. Hi. The most adorable dog. Oh, this yeah. is Buffy. Say hi, oh, Buffy. She's the best. Pop, look over here. Hey, Buffy. There it is. <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, th oh, thank you. You need to go now. I love you. <laughs> so we, we, we love Buffy. She's the best. Um, but anyways, uh, thank you so much to everyone who's joining us tonight. We just want to let you know a few things before we get started. Uh, firstly, is that we are a uh, an independent streaming project and we rely on your bits and tips and subs in order to continue to be able to do what we do. So if you're interested in helping to support us, please throw us uh, some of the, uh, your support in the way of bits, tips, and uh, donations. Um, one of the ways that you can help us out is we have a long-term goal for this show uh, as opposed to the usual way that we do unlocks for um, saving those shows what we are doing instead is a single long-term goal that if you manage to make it to one thousand dollars in donations or 400 subs in the span of eight episodes we will add an additional episode to the end of this run uh, which means you get more really cool gm list ttrpg shows and more of these wonderful people that you see here with me um and then if you are interested in sending us hmm, i think uh, uh a message from them is what we're going to call it uh today because last time it was a message in the bottle this time it's a message from them if you would like to send us a message from them anything from from $15, 1500 bits, or five gift subs will allow you to send us a message from them. Um, also, check out Die Hard Dice, where you can save 10% by using the code saving throw at checkout. Uh, you can use the command DH Dice in chat for links and info. So, yeah, uh, Dice, uh, Die Hard Dice is awesome. I have some of their dice, it's pretty great. Make sure you get some of those math rocks from them too if you have the uh, opportunity. Uh, for now, let's go around and introduce all of the players and then we'll get started uh, with uh, the, the show over here. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember where everybody is in our layout, so I'll just go based on what's in mine. Uh, let's start with Randy. Oh, hey, uh, I'm Randy Alvarenga, and uh, today I'll be playing a character named Francisco de Luna, a member of the Blue Skulls team. All right, and then Max. Oh, hi there. It's me, Max. Um, uh, on tonight's show, I'll be p playing the character of Slink, who will be uh, on the Hellions, to nobody's surprise. All right, and then next we have Amanda. Hi, uh, I am Amanda Powers, uh, and I will be playing Geneva Overfield, who is a member of the Auroras. Uh, and today I will be playing Palo Meeks, uh, who is a member of the Gargoyles team. Uh, so last week we finished up uh, the playthrough of my pick, The Quiet Year. This week we will be continuing our play of different gaming, uh, different game settings with They Came to Play Ball, which was Amanda's pick. So Amanda, if you want to, take it away. All right, awesome. Oh, here we go. Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, I'm really excited to play They Came to Play Ball. Uh, as far as how it works. We are anti-ball players, eldritch gladiators of the future. Both human and not, we exist to play ball. Um, that is directly from the book by Adira Slattery, who is awesome. Uh, so you should also check They Came to Play Ball out when we're done here. Uh, they Came to Play Ball is a vignette-based RPG uh, about relationships uh, and the games between the players from the five different teams, uh, four of which you heard about already. Um, the always champion Auroras, uh, the aquatic perennially second place Blue Skulls, the, uh, the newbie skull cracking Roughnecks, uh, unfortunately we don't have one of those tonight, um, the Gargoyles and their Beasties, and the fuck you, I won't do what you tell me, Hellions. <laughs> um, so before we go any further, I know we got names about the uh, characters, but I would like you guys to go into just a little bit more detail about like who your character is, like where they come from, what kind of person or player they are. Um, and also uh, please describe your position or 
tell us your position and your Eldridge mark. Uh, right. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. I, I figured it, uh, but uh, so Francisco, he's determined, fluid, and striking. He he serves as the Blue Skulls' uh, face. He's not the best player on the team, but I mean he's he's the face of the team. So he's the one doing all of their media and stuff. Um, he's number eleven, uh, which is lucky and uh, for him. And then he's what's called a fin sweeper. For their team uh his face is very sort of a mix between fish-like and cat-like i really uh, uh i like to imagine he has scales that go down his face dark eyeliner sort of this runny kind of look except cooler and um he has a body that's both half fish half cat but yeah not a catfish uh the coolest thing is he has those catfish whiskers because i like those Cool. Max? Uh, all right. Slink is on the Hellions. He plays, um, his position is the shadowed back. Um, he is shrewd, sneaky, and witty. Uh, and his uh, his number on his jersey is 4%, um, <laughs> specifically. Uh, OK. Slink is the kind of guy who, he's been on the team for a few years now. He's played for the Hellions for like four or five years. And he's the kind of guy around Athabasis, Ath Athabasis Station who can get you anything you need. Like, you want some, uh, some, some, some party favors? He's got you. You looking for some fun times with a companion? He's got you. You looking to do some violence? He can take you to some violence. The only problem is... Every once in a while, clients don't come back, you know, but nobody talks about that. Okay. Uh, oh, Eldritch Marks, sorry. Oh, yes. Slink has two hands, like a person, but one of those hands seems to constantly be flitting in and out of different realities and and humanoid or non-humanoid makeups. He refers to it as his anti-hand. It does a lot of weird shit that he oftentimes can't control. So sometimes it's fun to mess around with the anti-hand, but sometimes it is really awful for Slink and for everyone else involved. Yikes. Okay, uh, Aki? Uh, so Palo Meeks is a member of the Gargoyles team. They are a veteran and have been playing anti-ball for quite some time. This is their fifth alignment. Uh, and very likely to be their last as they are thinking they're about retiring uh, following uh, this this particular alignment. Uh, their number is not a number, it is an upside down cross and they themselves are covered in like, like cracks uh, all over their skin as though they're made of stone. Um, uh, they, they sport uh, short curved horns uh, similar to the kind of gargoyle-esque statues you often see in cathedrals uh, as their Eldridge mark. Uh, they are a, a generous, uh, imposing, and perceptive uh, as a person in general. Um, they uh, act as the second beastman of their team. Um, they never made captain, which was his first beastman, but they do uh, hold the coveted second beastman title and are... Uh, the person that everyone comes to when they're having trouble with their animals they're a bit of a they're a bit of a a, a whiz when it comes to uh placating them cool did you say your eldritch mark did i miss it yes it's the the cracks of stone the cracks. All over okay. this. yeah cool um awesome uh i again am geneva overfield a member of the auroras um geneva is uh kind of an up-and-coming uh I do realize that I forgot to say what my mount is. Um, Palomix uh, has a large space turtle. It's like a, a snapping turtle kind of horn sort of monstrosity uh, whose shell sort of shifts in like this galactic swirl. Um, and uh, that's, that's, that's their mount. My apologies. Go ahead, Geneva. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, Geneva is uh, kind of a, a rookie phenom. Uh, she kind of is getting called up to the big leagues uh, with this tournament of bells um, and is from a uh, 
you know, a very wealthy family, as a lot of the Auroras are. I keep thinking of them as like District 1 and 2 from The Hunger Games. <laughs> um, like, in the fact that they win every, they win everything, they win all of the tournaments, they are pretty, pretty kind of shitty underground, you know? You got like the top level, like, oh, we're so, hello, and then you've got the underground, like, we will kill you. Um, so, uh, she is, um, confident, aloof, and loyal. Um, we were asked as part of the game, you pick three kind of descriptive adjectives to go, uh, along with your character, just, um, as a heads up. And she's about six foot four. She's very tall, um, with, uh, is humanoid, uh, very long legs, like way longer than you would expect, um, which is good because the auroras they prize speed over everything else so those super long legs and just she's very long and lean um but definitely powerful you know like she can swing a sword um and her eldritch mark is uh basically her all of her skin um is uh basically the color of the dawn so like it's kind of like an ombre where it starts at like pinks at the at the bottom at her feet and her legs and then comes all the way up to like some oranges and some just all the way up to the top uh and that is her. So now that we know everybody, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how uh, the game is going to work. Uh, we'll all take turns choosing which vignette, like mini game kind of a thing that we want to play. Um, we'll briefly explain the rules to it uh, before it begins. And then we'll just keep going around. Uh, every game starts with uh, something called Galactic Press and we'll end with the closing ceremonies. Uh, but what happens in between those two things is entirely up to the good folks at this table. Um, the only other thing I think I need to explain is um, momentum, which is kind of the uh, currency for winning and losing uh, the tournament and the various games that are within. We all start with four um, and you know everyone can use you know, whatever kind of token, like, because I have a ton of them, I'm just using D10s, uh, but you can use pretty much whatever you want that's kind of little and token-like. Uh, and um, we all start with four and each game uh, involves momentum in some way. Sometimes you'll get some, sometimes you'll lose some, uh, and we'll just each be keeping track of our own today. Uh, so I think that's it, unless the three of you think of something that I forgot then uh, uh, let's do it. I think I'm going to have us go, um, we'll go Randy, Max, Aki, and me, and we'll just keep going around. So Randy, or Francisco, what would you like to play? Oh, well, I'm sorry. We yes, have we're playing Galactic, Galactic Press. Press. We're starting yes. with Galactic Press, which is there, you pick a press release uh, from a list that we have for your team uh, and read it aloud and kind of maybe give it a little bit of flavor, perform any actions listed on there, and it's as simple as that. So, those old Auroras should sit back down before they break something, like their tournament chances. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Fighting words. Oh, you in trouble I'm now. into it. All right. Yeah. Um, the Hellions press release says... The Devil Dancers, the Hellion's own cheer squad, is performing at midnight on the main pitch. <laughs> so yeah, come if you want to have a good time. That sounds safe, yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Very safe. All right. Uh, the Gargoyles press release is <laughs> the Hellion's. Those cheaters don't have what it takes to stand on the pitch and fight us. Another oh! <laughs> As it's read aloud, oh! <laughs> um, okay. Meanwhile, uh, in the land of those who are proper, official Team Aurora autographs will be available for sale outside the main pitch at noon. Come and get one. They'll have my signature on them. Yeah, that's... Yeah, who would want that? <laughs> I mean, everyone, we are, we win every tournament of bells. Like, who wouldn't? Do you want a picture, a signed picture of losers? I don't think so. I mean, they'll sell for a pretty penny. Look, kid. All right, fine. Over. Francisco, yeah. what's next? 
So for my first game, I'm looking at conversations over drinks. And I'd All like right. to invite Paolo Meeks. Um, so the first thing we, we need to do is ask each other, uh, how do you look at me and what's your mood? Uh, I think that when um, Paolo Meeks enters the bar, they are kind of, uh, they look relaxed, but uh, you can see in their eyes, there's a bit of a, there's a little bit of exhaustion there. You know, they've, they've started to, there's a, there's the distinct impression that they are kind of over the, um, the general uh, hoopla of the event. So, Francisco is, is sitting at the bar. This is a small bar away from the crowds. It's it's sort of where he likes to go to get away. So the, the games themselves for everyone at home take place in a city called Riot City. Um, and so this is this would be on the quite like sort of a very rough tumble kind of place. No one thinks that some of the players would be here. Um, and he's just trying to drink away he's he knows that this tournament is very important he's been waiting his whole life to do it and he's he's building up courage through liquor um he, oh paulo long time no see well i mean I couldn't very well miss my very last anti-ball tournament now, could I? Of course not. What is, it, what is this, the third time we've run into each other here? I mean, I'm not keeping count. <laughs> uh, drink with me, drink with me. Only if you're buying. I, I, I'll, I'll buy a drink this time. Next time's on you. And so the next part of this is to ask, uh, to choose one of these. So we can choose one. Obviously I just chose engaging in an impromptu conversation. Paulo, what would you like to do here? So what do you think the Blue Skull's chances are this year? All right. You're not hearing this from me, but I'd say, we're finally taking that win. This is our time. What, 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 what is with that face, Pop? I feel like I should warn you about their new rookie. You don't need to warn me. I've met her. She makes me sick. I, uh, uh, I've known her a long time. I mean, I know what kind of player she is. She's just like every other Aurora out there. Except maybe, uh... yeah, I just watch out for her. I spit at her. <laughs> Try that for real and uh, see what happens. Well, you're one of my favorite people. Let's drink. Cool. And and so that's, for me, the end of the conversation. Um, it, the end of the conversation, either when everyone has passed in a row or when everyone has left the conversation. I, I, yeah, I, I Sorry, go. No, just, to, just uh, to elaborate a little bit, like there are topical questions uh, that are on uh, the list here that you can use to talk back and forth. Um, but there are also just, you can just, you know, have an extraneous, com uh, extemporaneous conversation like um, was done here. So uh, on the conclusion of conversations over drinks, as far as momentum is concerned, uh, if you feel like the other player has formed some kind of uh, understanding of you, uh, you are able to uh, give them a momentum. Uh, so if either of you wanted to do that, you're more than welcome to. This is, I think, one of the few cases where you uh, would be giving a momentum from yourself to the other person. Uh, generally, if you're taking a momentum uh, or giving a momentum, it's going into like the pot in the center. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, 
the fact that Paulo sat down with me to drink is all I need. Uh, we don't sort of mingle outside of these games. Mm -hmm. So, Paulo, okay. this is for you. Thank you very much, Francisco. And we'll each keep track of our own like numbers. Max. I would like to um, blow off steam, if that's all right. Blow uh, off steam. Yeah, that is, let's see, hang on. Uh, find my page. page. Page 19. Yes, that uh, involves can, everyone. It involves everyone. So um, blowing off steam, everyone plays. They don't call it Riot City for nothing. We are about to riot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So this is going to be fun. Um, we can, we should do the traditional asking each other, how do you look to me? What's your mood? Uh, and then uh, during the riot, anyone may ask anyone for details about the location, participants, and circumstances. And then we will walk through conducting the riot, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, Slink is a kind of shady character, no great surprise, uh, who often kind of sticks to the shadows and kind of sneaks around and likes to get other people into trouble. So if you see Slink, his eyes are shifting, he's always looking for an opportunity, and he's always kind of got his back to a wall, like trying to find some sucker. Uh, okay, I think uh, Geneva walks in to the, uh, well, I guess it's not a practice pitch. Where are we? It's all of Riot City. I think we are rioting all over, so we can be anywhere. We can. I'm. I'm definitely running around town, being like. <laughs> oh, well, I see. I totally misunderstood that. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I think that uh, Geneva does not want any freaking part of this riffraff silliness. Uh, she's out eating. Uh, eating at an outdoor like restaurant. Uh, having a meal for one. Uh, as she pours over. Uh, the book of plays and only joins in because someone runs by and just like smacks or like accidentally, but like in the back of the head and it's just like, boom, like, and like, all right, let's go. Ah! I think uh, Francisco and Paolo are probably fairly drunk at this point and walking out of the bar with their, like their arms slung over each other, <laughs> laughing and, you know, shooting the shit. Uh, and when they see that a riot has begun, like uh, Paolo just sort of looks at Francisco and gives him a wink and like bull rushes into the crowd of people. Like, yeah. Um, All right. So then Francisco runs into a group of people, just starts body slamming, moving people out of the way. It's uh, just chaos. Uh, he lights something on fire. There's now cars on fire. <laughs> fire, fire. All right, Max, now we're gonna um, conduct the riot. Darn tootin'. So we're gonna go around in a circle, uh, starting with the person who called the riot. Um, and, and each of uh, and on our turn, we will choose another player and a circumstance, which there's a long list of circumstances where we can make some stuff up. We'll read it out loud, and then we'll RP a little bit of a scene. Um, so I would say that um, I'm going to uh, <laughs> somebody comes along and tries to start a brawl by punching me in the face. That So Slink is kind of like shifting along and he's kind of like, all right, all right, all right, all right. What's going on, what's going on? And he's like kind of casually like lighting matches and like flicking them in windows and like seeing how that goes and like looking around and you know, just like chucking rocks at kids and stuff. And, and he's just like, yeah, all right, screw this town, screw this town. I'm gonna watch it burn, I'm gonna watch it burn, baby. And a couple of uh, members of the Gargoyles team kind of roll up and they're like, hey, you slink? I'm like, oh, what's it to you, my man? And they're like, Paolo Meek sends their regards. And one of them takes a swing for me. And Geneva, you see this. 
So you and I are going to be in this scene. And I'm like immediately like, whoa, 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 and like ducking out of the way and like trying not to cause a fight. And I'm kind of like, hey, no, 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 it's all good. Paolo and me, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're all cool, we're cool. And they are like That's going to us. fucking murder me. <laughs> oh, so you want, you want to know if I do anything? Yeah. Ooh. Um, mm, mm. well, she thinks about it for quite a while for several <laughs> punches. Like, um, at a certain point, I'm seeing you. I'm like, hey. and is and finally, <laughs> finally, it's just like like was leaning against a wall with a sword, and it's just like pushes off the wall, and it's like fine, and just like stomps over, like and is um, hey. I know Paolo, sh they wouldn't be happy if you actually, you know, murdered him before they were able to play uh, on the pitch and in the games. So, you know, I think message delivered. Yeah, message delivered. Um, you got it, sir. Play rough, huh? And you play the way the boss tells us to play. Well, I watch yourself. And she just like brings herself up. Well, excuse me. I said that this was enough. And she's just like, she's got this giant, just like screaming, beautiful sword. Um, and is just like holding it. Like, semi <laughs> Sorry, well, I have a dog. That's, that's, that's the, the riot, riot the in riot. the background. Yeah, we somebody's laying out a bunch of dogs. Yeah, the dog actual, riot. Yeah, um, that's why. <laughs> I completely lost the plot. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so it's holding the sword, and it's just like, I think. I think we're done now. Goodbye. Uh, You're lucky. I know. I'm very lucky. I wasn't talking to you. Oh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> well, today I made his luck. Yeah, I take it where I can get it. Uh, <laughs> and then she, uh, I guess, yeah. do they leave, Max? Uh, I owe you one, kid. Uh... Yeah, and she she just kind of looks at him to see if he uh, recognizes her at all. But yeah, um, sure, I will. Uh, I'll collect on that. Okay, thanks. Bye. And like runs away, <laughs> like quickly. And uh, yeah, Slink is gonna kind of be like, "Wait a minute, I know that kid." And like walk off into an alleyway and like probably like punch a dog that was barking. Oh no! <laughs> he's an awful man. Well, now, uh, clearly. And, and and he's gonna think on that because something in the back of his brain. He tries to forget people often, <laughs> and so he's he's made a point of it. And he's like, I shouldn't have forgotten that one. Maybe. All right, uh, Aki, your circumstance. Please. Hmm. 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 Uh, let's see. I think we are going to, uh, as we're, as as Paolo is uh, ruffling through the crowd, um, they uh, spot one of the. Um, uh walls appears to have several buckets of paint sitting next to it um and they kind of look around a little bit uh notice that there's nobody really paying any attention to these buckets of paint uh and they try to catch uh francisco see if he's still nearby and uh if they can catch francisco's eye they're gonna like signal to the wall uh covered in paint or not covered in paint but uh with bunches of paint buckets next to it so you find francisco and he's standing around like just a string of cars that are now on fire there's just loud music <laughs> kind of like a outdoor mosh pit and he's standing on the outside just reveling in, in in the awesomeness of it um you come over and you're like uh you, you talk about the pain and he he's all for it he he loves to party um and so he's just gonna he's like we're gonna wreck this wall um and and he walks over and he's like looking at it and he's giving it that look that a lot of artists give like an unused canvas like <laughs> all the possibilities right and the 
first thing he does is just start throwing paint, like picks it up straight in his little little paw that he has, and he's just like throwing it at the wall, and then he starts smearing it. Um, what does Paulo do at that? Uh, Paulo kind of laughs at Francisco's like enthusiasm and just picks up one of the buckets of paint and like uh, kind of takes a couple of steps back. Uh, pulls that punk bucket of paint back as far as they can and slings it at the wall. But if Francisco just so happens to be in the way of that, like, so the the ensuing splatter is Francisco's shape, like has a Francisco shaped <laughs> hole in it. So like, it's the impression of Francisco on the wall. Yeah. Oops. And uh, touches the back of his head with the paint. And then he tries to get any that he can and starts trying to fling it at Paulo. <laughs> uh, another bucket of paint. You want to go? <laughs> yeah, it's a battle. <laughs> and so I, th I think we spend probably a good amount of time just like completely getting paint all over ourselves. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Oh, shit. The paparazzi found us. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. You, you, no, have, your you have your fun. This is great this stuff, is gonna you guys. This is going to be amazing. Great stuff. Come on. Where are you two going? Were you here together? Are you rioting together? No. Yeah, is why are you throwing thing? paint? Is this only because you're drunk? Are you drunkenly running around? Tell yeah. us. It's no not comment. a big deal. It's totally fine. And yeah, he, he well, instantly this grabbed is one of the cameras and tr like just cracks it on his knee. Oh, come on, man. That's my living. Your living, your living is about to be uh, abruptly ended if you don't get the fuck out of here. Yeah, well, whatever. Our job gives you exposure, which gets you bigger contracts and whatnot. So, you know, gift horse mouth. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think that's great. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, and when the, when the, uh, when the, Paparazzi finally fuck off. Uh, Paolo Meeks kind of looks at and Francisco and goes, I don't know. I think I might miss that. Yeah. <laughs> I love this part of the games. It's the best. <laughs> uh, too bad it ends. <laughs> but this year is my time. <laughs> and he cracked his knuckles and he's ready to move on. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay, um, I am, I have gotten into it with several uh, people. Uh, when it comes to <laughs> blowing off steam in Riot City, Geneva is a, a person of convenience. So she just usually leans against different walls very casually, like playing with a sword. And then as soon as something comes into her sphere of existence that, you know, might be fight worthy, then she gets up and goes at it. Uh, considering how large the riot is this time, she has been in many fights uh, in the last few hours and is sitting by uh, a makeshift, uh, like fire that someone built in a metal trash can. Uh, and- Ba try like bandaging, uh, trying to bandage her wounds a little bit before getting back up to go out for uh, round two. Um, and she sees uh, Paolo uh, walking by. Uh, Do you sit with me? Uh, Paolo is finally back on their way to their room for the night, uh, having had their fill of fun. They're covered in paint. Uh, they're still pretty hammered. Uh, but they see the uh, the uh, familiar uh, tall form of of uh, Geneva by the trash can, and I see you've been up to no good, cousin Paolo, and like holds out like her arm for like a yeah. Well met, cousin. Uh, you look like you've been up to uh, just as much fun, although uh, a bit of a m messier fun than one would like. Um, hello. Hi. How's it, how's it feel, your first uh, Tournament of Bells? Oh, um, it's, uh, it's great. Um, 
And the great is very not convincing <laughs> um, because she is just sitting there just like, has no idea what she's gotten herself into very clearly. And it's just like, oh, it's it's fine. So much fighting. I'm just looking at it as extra practice before before our first match. So, you know, it's great. Hey, would you would you hold would you help me with this, please? <laughs> sure. Thank you. Um, so are you are you uh excited um for your last tournament? Yeah, yeah. I think uh I think it's about time, you know. I've uh always found it pretty interesting that the uh, career of an anti-ball player is never all that long, but it is always very storied. So I guess I, I'm fortunate that I got to play in as many as I did. Um, and I'm sure you'll continue to do the family proud, Geneva. I intend to, thank you. I mean, you're on a team that always wins after all. So well, I uh, you never know. Anything could happen, but you know, probably not. Probably not. I don't, I don't really see, really see how, but I'm so proud that someone in our family has made it all the way to retirement. That's so rare here. Um, I mean, I guess you still have a few games to go, but I'm really rooting for you. Yeah. You never know. Could very well be my last game and my last days in this universe. Well, I'm sure that won't be the case. I mean, I definitely, when, when, when the the gargoyles, if they, when they play the auroras, I'll I'll be sure to 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 point and say no killing that one. <laughs> Don't pull any punches, kids. Sometimes what happens happens. Well, okay. Um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm ready for round two now. Um, so so um, have a good sleep um, with your with your old decrepit bones and. I will, I'll see you, I'll see you maybe tomorrow at breakfast. Sounds good, kid. Uh, try not to hurt too many people out there. No promises. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Randy. Yeah. No, so Francisco is sort of walking, drenched in like sweat and somebody's blood and like, just all kinds of crazy stuff. It's been a crazy night. Um, and then he starts seeing a couple of people in the distance juggling some flaming parts of what looks like a destroyed stall. And they're like tossing it back and forth. And there's a shop owner sort of, oh, but my cabbages. And uh, <laughs> and uh, it's it, it, he, he looks at them and he's like, oh, uh, this must be the Hellions. Right? And, and he starts thinking, and he sees this one player, Slink, who is sort of egging the guy who's like tossing things back and forth on. Yeah. And and he walks over, he's like, uh, and he, he starts walking up to where the guy is tossing the cabbage and he grabs it out of the air. And then he's like, You guys want to play a little game? <laughs> And the, the cabbage guy is just like throwing his head down. Sad. What does Slink do? Does Slink want to play? <laughs> okay. And Slink kind of looks over and he's like, got a match lit. And he's like, all right. <laughs> and he slowly just pulls out his nice little curved blade. And he's like chewing on it. And he's like, we play a game. And same thing. Francisco, who is still kind of dizzy from all the drink, pulls out his and he goes, I've got one too. Let's see who wins. <laughs> and he just grabs the ball, tosses it in the air and does a kick and, and, and starts like playing this. Not It's not a real anti-ball, so it doesn't do all the cool things an anti-ball does. Right. But he, he picks some guy from the side. He's like, you're on my team. And they just start like Playing a game out, out here and with cabbage. Slink catches the ball with his anti hand, and it it sort of like glorps into the hand and 
his hand starts to taking on like cabbage like qualities <laughs> and the ball starts taking on hand like qualities and like sprouting fingers and he's no. like like he's got it and it's like growing fingers and he's like all right let's see how this goes and he like throws it back at the guy that you grabbed and try and the ball grabs onto his face <laughs> oh, 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 nice <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> oh. and he like stabs a guy who's walking by. <laughs> I'm going to just cut somebody's leg too. Oh, I like the way you play this game. <laughs> I can't, oh, you must be one of the players. I can't wait to see you on the pitch. Oh, I've been looking to meet you, Francisco. Mm. I always like to, you know mess up a pretty face oh i'd love to see you try <laughs> and i i think they, they they start like circling each other and and all of that happens the game keeps going i think i want to say like francisco ends the match with like a couple of cuts that that but he has scale um so it's not like too bad this is just sort of a, a, a fun little game but uh yeah. Slink definitely is like dealing with the fact that like the le like the leaves on his cabbage arm are like sloughing off, and he's like not sure if he's gonna have a hand by the end of it. And so he's also got like a few cuts in this fucked up hand now, and he's like, I don't know what to do about this. This is a problem. And he's like eating it. I don't know. <laughs> I you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you want to? You should try some of this. It's time for bed. Time for bed. When your hand turns into a cabbage, it's time for bed. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, am I the last person? I well, then Max goes are. one more time. Yeah. The, uh, the yep. person who oh, starts goes one last time. Yep. Um, oh, okay. So when everyone's had a turn, introduce circumstances, and it's come back around to me for my second turn, choose to end the riot. Um, choose one that best fits the events to that point. Okay, an end to the riot. The riot is ending. Um, I would say that... Uh, a voice rises above the crowd and everyone stops in their tracks. Whose voice is it? So they are not often spoke of openly in Athabatha, Athabatha, Athabasis station. I'm never going to get it right the first time. <laughs> On the station. Uh, Sorry, but, Adira, who may or may not be in chat. <laughs> we're totally flubbing it. Uh, <laughs> but they who are the kind of great unknown seers and real reason that anti-ball is played and that anti-ball players are what they are. A voice that we cannot entirely hear, but resonates in our bones, echoes through all of the station. And it just says, we are pleased. Go to bed. <laughs> and everyone's like, well, I'm not arguing with that shit. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Peace. All right, cool. Um, so unfortunately, uh, for our participation in this riot, uh, we each lose one momentum. That's what we do Sorry. for getting up to illicit activities late at night. Um, not those kind of illicit activities. Uh, no, and cabbages. <laughs> that's that's fair. Uh, thank you, Max. Uh, Aki, your turn. Yes, I think that it's about time we do a practice together. Um, I think I would like it if everybody participated in practicing together because I don't know about y'all in chat, but I would like to see as many opportunities for everybody <laughs> in this in this game to play as possible. Um, but I need to find practice together in my thing so that I can, is it practice together or is it one-on-one? -on -one? I can't remember. There's a game in here that is. Uh, it says it's one-on-one, -on -one, but other players can join freely if it makes sense for that character to also oh, wait. practice. No, mm -hmm. I, found, I found practice together. Here it is. Her, all right, choose one of the other players to be a part of practice. Decide how you two decide to practice together. Other players can join freely if it makes sense for their characters to also be practicing. 
Uh, I think I'd really like to start this off with Paolo and Geneva um, as a kind of, you know, vet noob kind of a deal. And I think that what happens is that uh, when Geneva wakes up in the morning, they find an invitation uh, um, has been slid under their door uh, from Paolo. And it just says, meet me on the pitch. Let's, uh, let's see what you've got. And um, so when Geneva arrives at the pitch, um, Paolo is already there. They've been warming up. They have their sword uh, in their hand and their sword is kind of like this giant stone, like claymore kind of deal. Like it's just, it's, it's ginormous. And uh, they have their, their, they have their galaxy turtle kind of off to the side, uh, munching on, uh, you know, the pitch grass, um, just a munch munch. Um, probably already pulled a couple of holes out of the pitch, much to the, to the um, groundskeeper's dismay. And um, yeah, how do you look to me? Question, Are we're gonna bring in everybody? Uh, people can pop in, in uh, as they feel like it, yeah. The it's only under. reason I ask that is just for the sake of time and, and, and getting around more than once. Uh, normally, if you're doing a one-on-one, -on -one, you each ask two questions um, mm -hmm. before it's over. So if we're, all four of us are gonna come in, like let's maybe just do one. Each, that sounds good so we can me. keep moving. Cool. Um, so what did you ask me? I totally spaced on that. Uh, I just wanted to know how you looked. Oh, just... yeah. Geneva comes in just full head to toe, top of the line, like practice armor. Um, is just, and you can just, you can hear her coming <laughs> from rather, rather far away. Yeah. It's, it's obviously, it's not like big, like, heavy metal armor or anything. She's gotta be able to move, but um, it's definitely not quiet. Cousin? Cousin? I hope you're warmed up. I hope you're ready to go down, old person. No, uh, I still have what it takes. Don't worry about me. Oh, right, this is a, this is a practice, right? So like she goes and she, she, rummages in a bag she brought with her and brings out her like blunted practice sword it's like okay we don't want to get in trouble before the first match yeah uh paolo sets their claymore down and kind of picks up what is essentially the equivalent of like a boffer weapon themselves um and uh like uh stands on their side of the pitch and uh kind of crouches into a position uh and then uh, begin to launch themselves at you. And um, uh, let's see, let's pick a question here. Um, okay, great. So as they launch themselves at you, they lose their footing on the pitch. Uh, what, how does Geneva respond to that? Do they, do they let Paolo just bite it or or do they uh, attempt or does she attempt to intervene oh she absolutely lets paolo bite it like just just stands doesn't even move doesn't even blink just like watches it happen and then like walks over real quick and looks down <sighs> and is like that's a bad start there cousin that's not gonna win you any matches yeah uh... Certainly not the best start I've ever had, but I'm not used to doing this without, without Sunny over there. I just figured she deserved a little bit of uh, downtime. Don't want to tire her out before the match. Not usually on my feet for these, but I figure I gotta be uh, I gotta be um, available in the event that something happens to one of my teammates. Yeah, that's all very boring. Are you gonna get up? Yeah, yeah. You gonna help me up? I guess. Helps helps you up. Yeah, and you can see why Paolo is having a little bit of difficulty getting up because when you try to lift them, it's obvious that the stone in them is just like, oh, they're very solid. They're very heavy. They are. They are not. Uh, they're they're a unit, as one might say. A um, unit. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> one. Yes. Awesome. All right. Let's Is try okay? that again. Yeah. It, whenever any of the uh, of you others want to pop in, just go yeah. for it. Can I bring um, Randy? Is it okay if I bring you in with my question? Yeah, of course. Okay. So, 
uh, Paolo and I are having just a little 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 sword battle, um, and uh, over Paolo's shoulder, I see someone coming. So it says, "At this moment in the practice, you laugh. At what? Uh, I- Geneva is." Absolutely laughing at the uh, oncoming uh, form of Francisco de Luna, just absolutely, and not not even like quietly, just like in a pretty brash, loud fashion. Um, what are you laughing at? <laughs> look who it is, Francisco de Luna of the Blue Skulls. <laughs> Geneva, nobody cares. Oh, they will after this tournament. <laughs> no, they won't. Welcome to the practice. <sighs> Be careful you don't go down just as hard as the last time I saw you in game. <laughs> I do remember you and me had a match and you thinking that you did something cool and that caused me to fail. Oh, You're honey, dumb. I did. I did. It was very embarrassing. Everybody in the stadium agreed. It's I, not I counted, embarrassing. I counted how many seconds their laughter last, lasted for. 23 seconds. If you've got something to say, why don't you just see me out on the field? Huh? Oh, you want, you want a round two? It's going to go the same way, sweetheart. Oh, I, I can hardly wait. Come on, let's go. And you want to come at me? Yeah, he, he was ready to practice. And, and he, but you see this new sort of determination in his eye. And he goes, he, he looks at Paulo and goes, I see you two have met. I'm on she's your team. My, she's my cousin. And you just see a look that he had no idea. Thanks, MJ. Absolutely shocked. Um, and he goes, regardless, we're going to take her down. And uh, yeah, so. I love yeah. you, Max. Just putting the whispers in. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would say that I, Slink isn't going to join this practice, but he is watching from the stands with a few other Hellions. And we're like, try, I'm like asking questions. I'm like, who's that? Some shady characters come up. We're handing off some money. So, so then my question would be: You move in to tackle me, uh, Geneva. You move in to tackle me. Um, do you? What do you do after I, I hit the ground? You you get me a clean, nice, fair, good shot. Um, I have the ball. I think I'm going to to be running with it, and you just catch me on on the side. I don't see you. Boom. Do you linger? after the hit or what do you do? Okay, so yeah, like assuming like I actually tackle you and I land so that like I'm looking down at you, um, she's just gonna, she stops for a second cause you can tell she's like trying to think of something like extra cool to say, like she isn't quite <laughs> super awesome with the back and forth. Um, but then she, she comes up with an idea and she just looks at you and she goes, this is the closest you're gonna be to a woman or a man or another person this entire tournament. So I do it. And then gets up and leaves. Yeah. If, if, if Paulo hears that, they kind of raise an eyebrow and look at Francisco. And <laughs> Francisco notices that and tries to pretend that he did not. So Max, you're you're gonna stay out of this one. I'm gonna stay out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've, I've figured some stuff out though. Okay. All right. So, so that yeah, I believe that brings us to the end of practice. Uh, I think that as practice comes to a close, uh, Paolo sort of uh, sidles up to Francisco and goes, "You know, sometimes my." my cousin likes to talk out of her ass when she doesn't know what she's talking about. Notice that. I also can't wait to wipe that stupid little grin off her face. In the meantime, why don't we prove her last statement wrong? 
<laughs> oh, snap. You know I always like you. <laughs> and I think they, they the walk off. The camera fades away off, <laughs> off, to the, off to the side as the things get inappropriate uh, right. for a family audience. So everybody who was involved in the practice, which was Francisco, Geneva, and Paolo, are able to take two momentum from the pile uh, for themselves. All right, so that's, that brings it to me, does it not? I, I believe it, it does. does. Yes, it's me. Okay, um, I am going to entreat the void. Um, oh, yes. I am going to entreat the void, and I am going to... Excuse me. Oh, let's see. Well, I'm gonna, it's hard because one one person will entreat the void with me and then one person plays them. <laughs> and and like, I so desperately want Max to play them, but like, I, let's see, who am I gonna entreat the void with? Um, I guess, I mean, it can be with alone or with another player. So. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, invite Apollo to come. Uh, okay, come with me because I think this uh, in treating the void the 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 night before the first match is a family tradition, uh, stretching back like generations and generations. It doesn't matter if the family is on different teams; uh, it's just our family. They entreat the void, um, so we are going to perform a ritual to get their attention. Um, you choose uh, a chant that you will chant. Uh, another player will, who is Max, will embody them. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're going to read the chant. There are going to be costs to pay uh, by each of the people involved uh, in the chant. Uh, and then a response from them. That is whatever the player playing them decides they want to be, although there are suggested responses here. Uh, and the player who is playing them also gets to describe how they manifest. So uh, I know audio delay is kind of a B, but I would like to do the first chant, Paolo. Okay. Do you, I, I have a suggestion to make the audio issue a little bit less of an issue. Yes. Uh, since there are two different lines to this passage, one of us can choose one of those lines and one of us can choose the other and we can do it, run it through a few times. That is fair. Um, okay, I'll do the first one, but okay. um, Paolo, it's like, it's like dawn. It's like almost, it's very early. Um, and they are outside, not far outside the, the pitch because you got to be close to where the, the magic is and where you need your... Uh, your guidance, Paulo. I'm so I'm so excited to get to do to do this with you. It's been a long time since I've had somebody to do this with, so I'm really glad that I get the chance to do it. Oh, I know. Not alone for a change. Since Uncle Antos died two, yeah. two tournaments ago. Yeah, that one was rough. Um, okay, well, let's go. All right. <sighs> okay, she's like gets ready, just make sure her armor's on straight, everything's good, like just perfection from head to toe or as close as one can get, that's an Aurora. Uh, and, oh, sovereigns of the void beyond, we beseech you. Give us your bounties and we will aid your passage through this world. Oh, sovereigns of the void beyond, we beseech you. Give us your bounties and we will aid your passage through this world. Good things in threes. Oh, sovereigns of the void beyond, we beseech you. Give us your bounties and we will aid your passage through this world. Uh, and I, as that last syllable echoes uh, around, they hear something. You have been Victories? The blood of our no. enemies? No. Child. Oh. We take from you. 
you will I didn't... take what you have. I don't have a child. Oh. I don't I don't I don't have a child. Is there is there any something else like we'll pay we'll pay costs. You know what we, we know how this works to gain your favor. What would you give? What would you have us take? Oh, oh I've got a good one. Um and uh Geneva kind of thinks that she's cheating a little bit because this doesn't seem like it affects anybody badly, but I, the light of the stars in the sky will dim slightly because some of that power has gone into you and yours. And you can kind of like feel the world darkening a little bit around you like all things become a little bit less and you this like rumbling warmth cascades through your bodies that you feel oozing off of them but the other thing that happens is that you look to paulo next to you and paulo means less to you than they did before their star is also dimmer and the people you love and care about are more of a foggy memory you don't feel as connected to the people you cared about before yeeps yes this is a gift thank you thank you for hearing me paulo paulo your turn come Give me stuff, the good stuff. To you, I give my dreams. I give my peaceful nights. I give you my rest. Yes. Yes. And the feeling that courses through you is one of really intense alertness and sharpness that comes off of this. The idea of an eye whose lids have been peeled away and the feeling of coursing energy and adrenaline that will constantly flow through you. But along with that comes the unending exhaustion of knowing that you'll, you are unrested, you are unwell, you are always tired and you are always searching for rest. So along with literal physical tiredness, you emotionally feel detached from the things that keep you moving. Anything that pushes you forward feels like a task and anything that would allow you to stop feels really lovely. We thank you, we thank you for these bounties um, and shall entreat to honor you as best we can on, on, the, on the pitch. Um, oh, honor me at all times. Honor me in your waking hours. Honor me in life. And in death, you, Geneva Overfield, you are ours now. She looks around slightly nervously, um, but that actually, that brings it and treat the void to, the, to a close. Um, the person who is playing them uh, gets to decide how many momentum between three and six are bestowed upon each entreater. Oh, excellent. Um, well, I, you've both given them excellent, lovely gifts. Um, I would say that since we're only taking one um, cost from, from each of you, mm -hmm. but you brought a friend, uh, you will each be given four momentum. Excellent. Because they are pleased by having many offerings, but you know, look, you could uh, you could give up a lot. Yeah, we could have <laughs> given up more. I know. Um, okay, so that Day brings us. Hunger. 
through one full full round here. Um, I think we've got about 40-ish minutes to, to, to do the next round. So, and I think we want two of those to be matches. Mm -hmm. So um, let's get yeah. on our horses and do this. All right. So next uh, is- Do you want to play a match or do something else? I do want to play a match. Uh, mm, yeah, yeah, I want to play a match. Uh, so just give me a moment. I will go to play a match. So uh, I want to play a uh, an actual tournament match um, as opposed to an under uh, under the uh, what is it under under the table under deck. But under yes, deck. under the exactly. table. Yeah. Um, and so basically, um, at the start of the match, there's a lot of stuff that goes into a match, which I'm afraid. But uh, oh no. The uh I can go through it real quick. Yeah, I've got it yeah. like broken down. Like, Ooh, nice. so uh, matches uh, are played in four quarters. Um, the there are quarter suggestions that we have on these sheets. Um, some of them are not specific. Some are specific to the type of match, and some of them are specific to the te one of the teams involved in the match. Um, so for each quarter, the two teams that aren't playing, they get to choose what that quarter is. And then the two players that are playing, they bid on those quarters. So that's where your momentum comes in in, uh, in handy, is you will be betting your momentum, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for each quarter, hoping to outbid your opponent. Because if you outbid your opponent, you win the quarter um, and you win, <coughs> excuse me, whatever it is that that quarter says that you win. Um, if you tie, I believe, I forget what happens if you tie, but... I will look it up and we'll pretend that's not happening right now. I think you lose half your bid and nobody wins the quarter. Thank you. Uh, that's awesome. And also, uh, so whoever you know has the most, I believe at the end of those four quarters, they win the match. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, oh, cheating. It. Players can cheat. Um, you can pay a cost either as a player or as someone who's watching on the sidelines um, to cheat. Uh, and if someone decides to do that, it costs a certain amount of momentum. It's less for the Hellions, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, and then something what? something additional <laughs> happens if you decide to do that. But we will see if we get there. So passing it back to Randy, who are you challenging? I think this is a match that uh, we've been waiting for uh, for a while. I think it's definitely what has plagued uh francisco's like nights since the beginning of the tournament is getting a match against the auroras so i'm challenging you miss i just talked to the void <laughs> all right so we uh we each get three momentum because it's a tournament match right. um so blue skulls and auroras gain an extra momentum if playing a tournament match and uh so yeah. here we go. We got three. So, uh, Paulo and Slink, what is our first quarter? Uh, let's see. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to, I'll choose the first quarter. How about that? Uh, let's see. Because there's there are two different ways you can do the quarters play. There's like a general list of quarters, and then there's also quarter descriptions for each, uh, each team. Uh, and you can choose based on either one of those. Um, I'm going to start with a general one uh, for the first quarter. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First quarter is going to be uh, goals are slammed back and forth in quick succession. The winner of this bid keeps one of their momentum. And so you also have a right to ask your opponent at any time, how many momentum do you have? So um, I'm gonna ask uh, Francisco, how many momentum do you have right now? Uh, I, not in my hand, right? Five. Yeah, total, like oh, total, total five. Yeah, total is five. Total, total of five, okay, great. Um, so first bid, what do we think? Uh, oh, wait, wait, sorry, I'm sorry. Just, I, 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 I thought the bid had happened. I was holding some. 
total of uh go, sorry i have uh some in my hand uh without the hand i have seven total at, at like seven okay total. change your bed yeah yeah no, no i was going to <laughs> thanks um all right uh so what well, uh, I have to pick what my bid is, I guess, right? I have to, I have to mm -hmm. commit. I have to commit to my bid. Um, okay. I have committed to my bid. Have you? I, I did, yeah. All right. What do you got? Zero. Three. Yep. So. How uh, many do you have now? How many do I have now? Yep. After you get to keep one. Seven. Oh, no. I get to keep this. So. You get to keep one. Yep. Eight. Yep. I have eight. So that's the first quarter. Aurora's win win the uh the first quarter one note yes um, worth noting you're only allowed to bid zero if you have less momentum oh, than the person right. you're playing against right oh so you have to so you say yeah. you did one or something just so it's well i do have less than you don't i uh oh you may yeah Oh, you're pretty sure you do. That's right. You yeah, can bid zero. Uh, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you just. Oh got no! Four. Yeah, no, that's fair. True. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. You're good. That's a good note for. for, for yeah. Yes. No, thank you. Yeah. Second quarter, Maximilian. Oh me, oh my. Um. All right. A second quarter. You know what? I would like to um. Say that. We're going to use the Aurora's special quarter. Shining light erupts as the station rotates into a new dawn. The loser of this bid does not lose their momentum. Ooh. Oh, that's, I see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you butthole. Okay. And if you want to win it, bid big, but you know, hey, I'm just know. saying. Go big or go home. Well, no, I mean, so you win. Oh, you win, but you don't get to keep your momentum. Exactly. But if you lose, you do. Oh, this is garbage. <laughs> okay. It's your team. <laughs> I didn't, I know, but I didn't pick that. Blame Adira. Um, <laughs> Adira, what have please, you done? Please don't blame Adira. Adira is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, is I great. know. She knows. Um. All right. So yeah. whoever loses keeps their momentum. <sighs> Okay. She's I'm, just in chat laughing at us. I'm, I'm ready as well. <gasps> no. no, we got tied. It's, I have oh, two. we tied? No. Oh. You got two? Remind me what I, you literally You said both lose right half now. and nobody wins. You both lose half. Okay. So we each lose one and nobody wins. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Uh, round three. I'm going to choose from the tournament match list. Um, let's see. The crowd rises to their feet as a desperate throw is made before the buzzer. Both teams keep their momentum from this bid. Mm. Okay. And, uh, at any point, their momentum? Yeah. Okay, so. But what I want to do is I want to cheat. No. Oh, okay. I want. Okay, I want to cheat. Um, I would. I don't remember what I have to do in order to be able to cheat. I think you I have, have to spend two momentum. Spend yeah, two I momentum. have to. Yeah, I have to spend two momentum, and I would like. Uh, I would like the blue skulls. Uh, to take a momentum. Okay. Oh. Got it. Uh. <laughs> All right. What did I do? <laughs> like, legitimately. <All> right. like, <laughs> I am a shining beacon of this game. Yeah. Like, also, this is my game. You guys, like, the nice <laughs> thing would be to let me win. Come on. Sorry. <laughs> All, right. Um, all right. So, I'm going to ask again, Randy, how many momentum do you have? I have right now back to seven. Okay. So, but still both teams keep their momentum. That doesn't change. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there's really <laughs> only one move here. 
<laughs> okay. Is it seven? It is seven. <laughs> is it seven? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so we so lose. The, the, yeah. Second. Nobody loses anything. Everybody keeps their momentum. Yep. yep. Um, oh, right. Well, so yeah. What's interesting about this is that bid. we have now nobody won. Yeah. Nobody that means won. you're. We, we oh, have one, never mind. We have one more quarter. And this yeah. is. One this is quarter. either you win yeah. or we tie. Yeah. For the match. Yeah. So it's been two quarters of just like gridlock back and forth. Mm -hmm. Sword Sword is a pretty good yeah. match. Just anger. What you're seeing in Francisco was just pure rage. Um, usually, anyone who's watched Anti Ball before would know that Francisco is, likes to play it cool. He likes to be the patient waiter, waiter. But here, there's something about you that just rouse him. It's a um, punchable face. That's it, what it is. It's a very punchable I, face. You don't have a punchable face. Geneva's just mean to him. <laughs> no, she just uh, embarrassed him. She wasn't mean. She embarrassed him. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> I agree. I agree. All right. What's our last match, you guys? Final quarter. Oh wait, I want to. I want to. I just wanted to add a little flavor uh, as well, if I could. Um, so, Geneva is the you know is the rookie on um, on this juggernaut of a team. So mm -hmm. that actually kind of gives her a little bit more freedom because she knows that you know whatever she's doing, like the rest of the team, like has her back. Like they're like knights in arms together. Like that's how they they think of each other. So. She's literally just, she's very, very fast. She's a side striker. Um, so she just like tears around, just like dicking around with people um, and like doing that twice as many times uh, to Francisco as to anybody else on the Blue Skulls. <laughs> Great. Because it's her job and she wants to do a good job at her job. Um, so last quarter, Max, my friend. Last quarter, yeah. Person that I think is so great, who loves <laughs> Well, that's okay. This is neither going to be good nor bad for either of you. The crowd roars as a massive drive towards the net is launched. The loser of this bid spends one extra momentum. Ooh. So if you lose, you lose a little harder than normal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, But this is the last one. This is yep, it. This is final quarter. It's all or nothing. So, wait, what was it again? The the loser spends one extra momentum. The loser spends one extra momentum. Okay, well. Ready? Seven. I have four, so I spend five. Oh, dang. I didn't want to do, I didn't, yeah, you win. I win. So. I win. I win. <laughs> I want you the to whole know. team. It says the whole team in yeah. unison. Yeah. So, so how does that last moment happen? Can you can you illustrate that for us? So I'm gonna say All that right. Geneva is good, but she is not, you know, the best person on the team. Um, yeah. Oh right, because I get to decide uh, the end. I think right? Don't I? I think the winner does get yep. to determine. Uh, that's my understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Winners, winners circle. Um, so this is definitely, so it says a star is born or falls. Describe how the station's opinions have changed for one of the characters on the winning team. Uh, oh, on the winning team. That's not what it, no, I was trying to be nice to you. Oh. I was going to be like on the opposing team. Francisco de Luna was very impressive. Um, <laughs> but, no, I just in in the mindset of Francisco, I'm just like nothing good can come from Geneva. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I will say, uh, both teams left hmm. are left beleaguered, injured, and panting. Uh, an even match, it could have gone either way up to the buzzer. No one takes any momentum, uh, but everyone feels like they left everything out there on the pitch. Yeah. Um, and Geneva does walk over um, and is like. I think it's time to figuratively bury the hatchet. Um, Francisco, uh, good game, good good match, uh, and and best of luck in the rest of the tournament. He he pauses, and um, for just a moment, you you see a hesitation 
he puts out his hand, shakes your head, good match. You just, when, when you see his hand, it's just cut up. Like he was so injured from the battle, uh, just all over the place. Um, he goes, I'm sure you'll have a long career ahead of you. And he looks back at his team and uh, at, like to the sides of him. And he's just <laughs> like, sorry, <laughs> he's just uh, not okay. He's not okay after this match. Oh, buddy. Yeah. All right. So that's going to bring, I think, that to a close there. Um, I think with my second turn, I'll do the closing ceremonies. So whichever one of you wants to do the second game, feel free. Cool. Uh, one quick thing that I forgot to mention when you entreated the void. Uh-huh. Both uh, Geneva and Paolo get el new Eldritch Marks. Oh, right. Oh. And so I would like to give you your Eldritch Marks. Mm -hmm. So they are both going to do with your eyes. Geneva, as the stars have dimmed for you, your eyes have become removed and are just blackened sockets. Floating in each socket is one little sparkling piece of light, like a distant star. Neat, actually. <laughs> Paolo, your eyes now are covered in pupils. So wherever you look, they are looking in all directions at all times. You can kind of see the back of your eye socket, the front, the sides. You have like I'm full like a bug. immersive <laughs> vision from your eyes. I, I'm a nightmare uh, yeah. for anyone who has problem with eyes. <laughs> yeah, if you have that weird, uh, what is that thing where, where you hate the, the little hole? Uh, Colin has it. Yeah, if you have what Amanda's husband has, you hate Paulo's eyes now. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Colin. Um, okay. So, okay. sorry. Anyway. Yeah. Cool. That's cool, though. Uh, yeah, no, that's I, it. I, I, trypophobia. Uh, if you have a trypophobia. trypophobia. Yeah. So I think, uh, I think what has to happen here is that uh, the girls need to challenge the Hellions to an under deck match. I think that's exactly sure. right. Uh, if I'm up next, the Hellions will happily challenge the gargoyles to an under deck match. And uh, yeah. Slink is going to kind of roll up quietly to Paolo and be like, Hey, look, you want to send your people after me? Not a big deal. I get it. I owe you, but there are easier ways to solve this problem. I'm going to get my money back. Why don't we put it all on the game? It's my last one. Why the hell not? Yeah. And I don't intend to lose. We'll see. See you there. Asshole. Jerk. Schmuck. <laughs> all right. Uh, Randy, would you yeah. like to... Francisco, would you like to choose the quarter first? I would. So the coaches uh, call a timeout after a particularly brutal play. Uh, both teams take one momentum from the stash. So, so what was oh, that no, that's play? Actually, that's oh, for sorry. the tournament match. Tournament. You're right. Sorry. Tournament. Oh yeah, we're playing under deck. You're right. You're right. Uh, fine. Uh, in that case. A fist fight breaks out between the coaches as play ignores them. The winner of this bid keeps two of their momentum. How many momentum do you have, Max? Three. How many do you have, Aki? <laughs> <laughs> I have eight. Great. This sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said get momentum. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm bidding four. Zero. Mm -hmm. So the winner of this gets to keep two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And you're seeing like the Hellions are like Slink is out there doing his thing, like shadow backing, like trying to cut the Achilles tendons of many of your players. But, um, you're seeing a lot of Hellions players that you don't recognize. Like a lot of young talent is on the yeah, field. Yeah, did you right both now. take uh, momentum for the match starting? 
Oh yeah. Oh you get, no. How you much get do we two get? Momentum. Okay. Well, then I had five. Oh no. Sorry. You get. Thank you, Adira. <laughs> Thanks, Adira. You get. No. No. Wait. Hold on. Uh, the gargoyles get three momentum. The hellions get one. Or two. Sorry, two. Got it. We get two. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, classic gargoyles are all richy, running around with all their money. Um, get but, that. Uh, okay, so... Yeah. And you see Slink's anti hand just, like, start being like... <laughs> He's like, really? <laughs> uh, uh, it's not my fault. Your hand is more capable of following orders and instructions than you are. Yeah, well, at least somebody here's a free thinker. <laughs> <laughs> and how's that going for you? You know what? So far, I feel pretty good about it. I'll Most see you at the end of this match. All right. I'm trying to come up with a good one that will or pick a good one, but uh, trying to give Max a little bit of a better chance here. No, you do what you got to do. It's fine. I'm. There fine. are actual winners and losers. It's going to be great. In. And they came to play ball. There's I'm... one thing I know about myself. I'm very comfortable losing. All right. Well, <laughs> in that case, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to pull my quarter from the gargoyles list. So a large slobbering beast has gotten onto the pitch that doesn't belong to anybody on the gargoyles team. Uh, teams must bid a minimum of three momentum this quarter and can only bid zero if they have less than three. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Did you just not tell me that you have no problem losing? No, that's fine. I'm very happy and comfortable with this scenario. I love you. I love you too, bud. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Spotting one. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I'm bidding seven. I'm bidding three. I don't know how many I get to keep. Do uh, I get to keep any of them? No. 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 Oh, shit. All right. How, many, uh -oh. how much momentum do you have? Well, I have a lot less now. I way overbid on that one. Well, how many do you have? Two. <laughs> okay. All right. Well... For the next quarter, I'm taking it from the Hellions playbook, which is someone is injured on the pitch. Those Achilles, man, you got one. <laughs> and uh, it serves as the perfect distraction. The winner of this bid can cheat once for free next quarter. Excellent. Uh, and keeping in mind that the Hellions... Uh, pay one fewer momentum in order to be able to cheat uh, in general. Um, and when you cheat, you can do one of the following. One of the teams in the match takes a momentum. One of the teams has to place their bid in the open before the other player, or they can force a new quarter to be selected if you decide to cheat. So bid, my friends, bid to the void. I mean, I bid zero because that's all I've got can't bid zero i can if i have less than you or less they than said three you had two i only have two momentum i've only got two momentum oh, oh so no, you no, have no, to bid no, no, no. i think you have to bid right yeah i think i think you do but let's look at the interesting rule i'm checking yeah. you must bid at least one yeah if you have fewer you can choose to bid zero got otherwise it. you must always bid one at least interesting <laughs> then i bid one i bid two all right I'm going to win that one. Ooh. So, so, what so it, go ahead. So what do you win, happen? but what happens? Yeah. I can So this is the third quarter, right? Yeah, yes. but what I'm what I'm trying to just, what I'm trying to figure out is like I lose my men, my momentum, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you do too, don't you? Yep. Cuz you cuz you lost, okay. Yep. Because you won. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the winner only gets to cheat for free next quarter if they yeah. want. No one keeps any momentum from whether they win or lost, won or lost. So are we at like two to one, uh, Apollo? I have. Um, uh, yes. Quarter wise, I mean quarter wise. Yes. yes. Quarter yes. quarter wise, Apollo has one too. All right. Ooh. So this is the last one. Hmm. Uh, 
Oh, it's a tournament match. Hmm. Uh, no, it's, yeah, an it's not. A, it's not no, a, I know the one I was going to pick is from is what I was under the tournament match. So I was like, oh, I can't pick that one. Yep. I know the feeling. Uh -huh. There's one from the under deck play that I think actually would fit really nicely. The last one? Uh, either the last one or the first one. Sure. Okay. The, uh, the crowd screams out for blood as the blades flash in the air. Someone on the losing team gets injured. What do you got? I mean, I, I'm bidding my last one because it's all I have. I bid zero. <laughs> all right. So Paolo gets to choose the uh, the well, winner's hold, circle. Hold, 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 on, hold, hold on, on one moment. Oh, uh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so we're going to play this out a little slowly. So Slink is, you know, shadow backing mm -hmm. and turns to one of his guys and, like, gives him the look. And one of his guys, like, elbows him across the eye, like popping his eye out for a second. He's like trying to put it back in. He's like, ref, gotta take me off. You gotta take me off. And the ref is like, whoa, that guy's all fucked up. <laughs> and, he's, and he's taking him off. And as he's taking him off, Slink's ante hand just kind of taps the ball and he walks off. And right as he walks off, we're gonna cheat. <laughs> and now, an unstable non-regulation ball explodes, injuring the teams and even the crowd. The match ends prematurely, and no one wins. <laughs> you can do that? Wait, oh, yeah. wait, let me wait, let me check. Well, oh nope. This says force a new quarter to be selected, but not that you get to choose what the quarter is. Oh, I don't get to choose it if I cheat? I don't know. That's what I'm, I, I'm not sure. It's not clear. It just says force a new quarter to be selected. I think for flavor, we'll just keep it the way that it is. Yeah, yeah. I think it's cool. It's better that way. But <laughs> for those for those at home who might want to play, I'm not sure on that. Uh, but Adira is in chat, yes. so she can clarify. She can that. definitely clarify as to whether or not I'm allowed to just fuck this game. Oh, right oh. Well, um, Aki would also get her bid back if that was the there. Or there. Sorry. That's true. You would get their bid back. Cool. They I get one get... momentum back. Hur hurrah. Hooray. I will, take, um, I will take my bid. But the underdeck stadium has been horrifyingly explodified. Many of our fans are incredibly pumped about their burn wounds. And all of our new players that we fielded are like, many of them are dead, but hey. <laughs> That's why we fielded a bunch of new players. Mm, mm, mm. What a match. Get, like, yeah, Paulo comes up to Slink and goes, I'm not leaving here without my money. Yeah? What's it feel like to have half your team taken away to the burn ward? Keep I'm coming still, for it. I'm still here. All right. Not forever, old one. Well, I can do this all day. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Just waving a pennant over here. Hooray! Hooray! Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, gosh, those were I, I like those a lot, those matches. They were great. This game plays so well. This yeah, is a it's very smooth. 100%. Awesome um, game. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Max could play for hours. He would just keep going. Oh, my um, God. But uh, Aki. All uh, right. So that's my round. So Aki, Paolo. Let's see. We have a little bit of time left. Mm -hmm. So I think I think let's do another Galactic Press. Sounds good. Oh, okay. We've we played a couple of rounds, uh, a couple of games. So I think that I think that we should play uh, another Galactic Press. And since I chose it for my turn, I get to take a momentum. Um, but I think that like basically we've gotten through you know, a couple of rounds of the game. And so there's always like, you know, a couple of, of new rounds of press after, you know, a few matches have been done. Uh, so let's see what I'm going to choose for my next galactic press. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, all right. Uh, gosh, this is a terrible idea. But uh, we will consume, gnash, and destroy. We challenge the Auroras to a tournament match. 
Told you it was a bad idea. <laughs> All right. Oh, I, I guess if we're going yeah, around. Yeah, everybody gets around, yeah. Uh, true to previous form, Shining Fury Crisp Bright Cereal is now at a stall near you. <laughs> Take a bite. You'll be a fan for life. Oh. <laughs> All right. The auroras are so great. <laughs> they are so pure. Yeah. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> I guess we oh, okay, okay, yeah. Got it. Uh so just to throw some people off of uh his relationship <laughs> with them, uh with Paulo, he he looks at the camera very half-heartedly and goes, the gargoyles should just stay at home and play with their pets. Takes one to know one, Francisco. Burn. And the Hellions press release is um, from their coach, uh, James Q. Lucifer. Uh, and <laughs> And he's like, after last game, I just wanted to be clear, the ends justify the means. We can and we will do anything it takes to win. Thank you. All right. He's a, no, his, you know what? His name is Chad and he's a demon. And I don't know if any of you. <laughs> you stop we it can and Chad. will do. <laughs> he would not be on the Hellions, okay? He loves the Hellions. Oh, he totally would be a Hellion. Would like, be. He's taking them to the tournament title. He's going to yeah. take them all the way. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think I, I kind of accidentally preempted a little bit. No, I'm just uh, going to play something else. I'm going to do another. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to do another, just finish off the round and do something different. So cool. just because the that the story hasn't come out yet, uh, I'm going to do a uh, a one-on-one -on -one with Slink. Um, so for a one-on-one, -on -one, um, the participants take two momentum from the stash. Um, and the player, basically, so a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you're like on the pitch, having a one-on-one, -on -one. very simple. Um, you ask questions uh, back and forth. Um, oh, sorry, you make plays back and forth and there are a list of plays here. Um, you have to go at least three plays, not each total. So one, two, one, at least three um, before you can bring a, what's called a buzzer into play, which will end the match. Um, so yeah. uh, you just keep, Asking questions back and forth. Um, and then it says, if you feel that you end the fight injured, disgraced, or embarrassed, tell the other player to take a momentum from the stash. I got it. Okay. So, uh, the player with the least momentum begins. I think that's you. I have nine. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's definitely me. Jesus. You have nine momentum? Woo! Fucked. <laughs> I think the Aurora is a Listen, we all, we all know who's winning this year. <laughs> well, it's not. That's the thing is, like, the momentum part doesn't, like, affect an outcome at all here. It's just. So, anyway. Yeah. So. Um, cool. So, it's me. So, I pick one. Well, so, Geneva has actually uh, sent a message uh, to Slink because despite what she expected, she really hasn't heard anything from him uh, at this at the tournament and she very much was expecting to. So she's gotten a little nervous um, <clears throat> and just figures the best way as a Hellion to draw him out is to challenge him to a one-on-one -on -one match. So she does and she stands in the middle of the pitch uh, at like, le like midnight and waits. And, um, you know, as she's standing there in the middle of the pitch, uh, she, I know she can't, like, see as well as she used to. The world is a little darker. So Slink doesn't know this, but Slink kind of is walking, is, like, working his way up, like, quietly, like, checking over his shoulder, like, constantly, like, well, okay, Cool, cool. And like gets up very close to Geneva before he realizes she has no idea he's there. And he's like, <clears throat> Hi. 
heard you wanted to see me. Oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's you. Um, oh, yeah. And it's you. Yeah. Um, did you, were, were you just pretending not, not to know me earlier? Oh, no. I legitimately tried to forget about you. You're dangerous, kid. Oh. I don't uh, know. Yes, exactly. Yes, I'm, I'm very dangerous. Um, oh. The, the Auroras on. are on their way to winning their, the tournament for approximately the thousandth time in a row. And if that was what I was talking about, I'd be just like every other anti-ball player out there. But no, I mean, you carry a lot of mess and baggage in your wake, buddy. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I do. Are I don't think people reach out to me for no reason, you know? Mm -hmm. I got it if you want it, by the way. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. Let's just, oh, let's play. Sure. And I'll, you know, amble over to the side and there's a few anti balls kind of stacked up, you know, on a rack or something like that. And I'll grab them with my normal hand and spin it. I, sure, let's play. And just, starts to touch it with the ante hand and it starts to grow like a shell that looks a lot like the shell of Paolo's turtle. I'd be like, Shh. All right. So which and play are you doing? I am going to, um, I'm going to start running towards the opposing net and I'm going to shove you aside and slam the ball towards the net. Uh, you can spend a momentum to block it, or you can let me dunk on you. So, well, I might as well spend these momentum. But <laughs> uh, no, actually, for the first one, she's not quite together. She's not quite like got all of her bearings uh, after that. So. Uh, <laughs> you knock into her and it's just at exactly the right like angle and force. And she just like eats shit. Was... Not as sharp as you always are, huh kid? I don't know. I don't have a magic hand to cheat with. Oh, everybody's got something. Uh, all right, go for it. Um, okay. And so she picks herself up and just kind of brushes herself off because she has gotten a little dirty. Um, and the only dirt she prefers to have on her is blood. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, our, uh, our blades clash as we forget about the ball. Um, spend one momentum to go for a cut. Otherwise, you give up the ball to me. I'm going to spend the momentum. Uh, I definitely want Geneva on her back foot. So uh, as you're coming in this giant sword, I'm going to kind of just like slowly faint out of the way and draw my curved blade and just be like, and just very, you can barely feel it, but you realize as you look down that there's like a long cut across the front of your chest and like, Watch out for things you're not looking for. There's always something in the shadows. And um, just uh, gives a very, very unladylike uh, <laughs> curse. Uh, and it's just like <laughs> punctuated by dog. Punctuated by dog. And it's just like, ah, dude. Um, and uh, <laughs> So fun. Next. Um, I am going to, well, at this point, we've stopped. We are in swords mode here. So the ball is now out in the open after a clash. Uh, you can spend one momentum to seize it. Otherwise, 
It's mine. He's going to spend the momentum um, because uh, Geneva's built for speed, uh, as previously mentioned. She's very fast. Um, so as soon as she sees it, she also sees it as an opportunity to save a little face and goes and uh, seizes it and heads down the pitch to score a fake goal um, and then kind of comes back over to you um, and is just like, you, you don't remember me. That's actually, that's good. That's good, Slink. That's good. Kid. It's going to cost you a lot to have me really forget. I already paid you. Oh, you paid me money, but I don't think our bills are settled. Well, what do you, what do you want? I want Paolo Meeks out of the equation. I know you're close to them. Cousins or something I've been sniffing around. I don't like the way they treat me. What if I say no? Well, then Geneva Overfield's going to be out of the equation. Because what I've been supplying to Geneva Overfield to get her over here, that's frowned on by the league and by them. I'll have to I'll have to think on it. I'll let you know tomorrow. Don't think too long, kid. And he's going to slink back into the shadows. Sweet. Sweet. Um, all right. Plot so thickens. I think it's uh, the plot does thicken, and we're going to leave everybody hanging um, yep. a little bit. Because uh, now it's time, as we head down the last bit of this, for the closing ceremonies. Yeah. So... The Tournament of Bells has come to an end. All is still. Whoever has the most momentum left wins the Tournament of Bells and claims the title. So let's, what do we got? <laughs> um, I mean. I, I'm doing pretty well. I one, think I'm very confident. Two. <laughs> two. Two. Eight. Yeah, which means uh, wow. Aurora walks away with it again. Once Fucking again, rookie, rookie phenom Geneva Overfield helps lead the Auroras to their 10th yeah. straight title. Um, and um, so the I'm winner glad that we could, I, I'm glad that this ended in a way that is like kind of set up by the <laughs> game. I, I'm actually pretty appreciative of that. The, yeah. uh, the winner narrates and describes the final ceremony where they bestow the title onto the winning team once again i am going to pass that to max to do it for me well if you would be please play the the, the winning team in this in this scenario that would be grand and the dais that they're on slowly raises up as they look over the crowd, as the auroras look upon their screaming fans who are obviously showering praise and ululations. Many are carving the names of their favorite players in their chests, um, as is the way. Uh, and as the fireworks and the literal fires and everything are going off, all the sound in the space starts to reverberate and, and become louder and louder and louder and louder and kind of it becomes like a cacophonous din and windows start cracking and the ground starts cracking and everyone has stopped making sound but it's like being torn out of their throats and the auroras are like Aah! and in the middle of it their coach's head just like peels back in a huge <laughs> Un like uncloud of like inky darkness comes out and is just like wow, <laughs> guys were amazing this year. It's looking like it, like it has no eyes, but it is looking at you. <laughs> like so good. Oh my god, 
gosh, thank you. Oh, totally. We've been talking about it, and it's just nuts. It's so Get. nice. It's so nice to meet you. And she, oh. like, absolutely gets down and, like. Yeah, that's the right idea. But seriously, that can wait. Come on, oh, man. Can I get a picture with you? And the coach's like arm like shatters out in the wrong way, and this like inky like camera thing shoots out of his palm, and like the the uncloud is like s floating over next to you, being like, yeah, "Good look, hey, yeah, hey, smile." And then for a second, like everything in existence blinks out of existence, <laughs> and it's like, and then like the coach's arm like shatters back into place, and they're like. We have so many things to teach you, but for now, you and your team must receive our gifts. And from the sky, like little flower petals, rain, a, this kind of like soft, velvety thing and as it falls on everyone they can see for one moment the day that they die <laughs> and we're like and the inky blot is like expecting a response and it's like thank you we are honored for your blessing welcome. I can't wait to see next year. My fantasy team is going to be fucking amazing. To the void. To the void. And it like sucks back into the coach's mouth, but like also half the coach's face goes with it. Now uh -oh. it's just like a pair of eyes and like his whole nose and mouth are like in his throat. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, okay. So generally whoever has the least momentum narrates the state of the station um, at the closing of the tournament. Um, if you don't mind just, for... Uh, let's have um, someone else do it because I I just did a whole thing. Yeah, who wants to who wants to talk about the station? What happens to the station? Where it goes? Go, Randy. Yeah. All right. So, Randy, you do it. Yeah. Okay. So we're at that last moment, and just the audience is just watching, and in, in what just occurred as Geneva was given, you know, that gift. Um, everyone looks around and they start just like preparing to go but they're, thanks um one of the big things is that the station itself is just trash like riot city i mean this happens every year we we expect it but but this is phenomenal levels of trash <laughs> like um and, and so what happens next is as people are leaving the station sort of blinks into this this dark void sort of like a, a mini black hole and it pops up every year that this happens, it moves somewhere different and where it went and whoever didn't leave the station in time is out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Amazing. Yes. Okay, great. Um, I want to say that Paolo Meeks actually does not leave the station. <gasps> oh. Oh. Fuck. This is their this was their last match. They wanted to make sure they would not be tempted to come back. So they did not leave the station. My goodness, what a twist. Um Damn. So we only have a few minutes uh to go. Um the end of the game is supposed to be you go around and you give just a quick quick epilogue about your character. Um but before we do that because after that we're going to send everything back to to Aki, I just want to say thank you to uh, Randy and Max and Aki for playing in what is like, I know I'm not a GM, but it's the first streaming game that I have ever had, ever guided of in any way. So um, it's very nervous. I appreciate playing with three such awesome uh, Roll With It uh, players. And thank you to anybody who is in chat that has been watching uh, with us too. I hope you had a, as fun of a time as we did because we sure had fun. Um, you did such a good job and we are so proud of you. Hey, you did fucking you. awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna say that Geneva breathes a huge sigh of relief when she realizes that she does not have to decide whether or not to kill uh, her cousin. 
uh, for, <laughs> so that Slink will not uh, reveal her her insecure little secret. Um, and she goes home with uh, the cheers of the crowd ringing in her ears, following her home. And, you know, she doesn't do a whole lot. She goes right back and starts training for next time. All right. So Francisco leaves the, the tournament utterly just, like, devastated, right? He, he thought this was the year. Uh, until... Some time later, I mean, he's he's he looks completely different. He's very scraggly. He's drinking a lot until sort of he meets someone who gives him some information about a certain player on the Aurora's team. Uh, and with that knowledge, what does he do? He plans his favorite. <laughs> he plans the best way to get payback. For the next you. alignment, you know. Uh, I, I guess I will just like really quickly elaborate on Palomix's epilogue. Uh, they chose not to leave the station because they knew if they went back home, they would be tempted to join the alignment again and they don't have it in them. Uh, so they choose to stay uh, at the station knowing what will happen if they do. Uh, but the very last night before the station goes away, they spend one last night with their uh, on again, off again lover, Francisco. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, they, they uh, yeah, one last time, George Washington's going home. Smashing. Uh, Smashing. Can I just say one thing? Francisco had no idea you weren't leaving. And that is something oh, that- did not, did not tell, tell did There's not tell him. Slink. It's brutal. So Slink's last day on the station was like a beat for beat, very similar to the hit film Training Day, uh, in which Slink <laughs> is now running all over fucking Riot City and Athabasis, trying and being like, I owe Apollo Meeks so much fucking money. They are going to fucking kill me. <laughs> like, it's like, couldn't blackmail anybody. Don't know what I gotta do. Like freaking out and like burning bridges like crazy. It's it's like full mayhem, like doing anything. And he finally gets together like probably like half of what he owes to Apollo and is just like leaves it at the drop and is like, I am a fucking dead man but is like, I'm getting out of here, goes to get on the ship. And uh, two of the Gargoyles teammates are at his ship before him. And um, I don't yeah, know. They were explicit, yeah, they were explicit instructions left behind. Yeah. But yeah, so I don't know what happened to Slink, but he left behind, you know, he knew that this day would come. So his blackmail has been uh, sent out. All right, and scene. Oh man, that was so fun, you guys. That was that, that was, was a, a lot of day. fun. It's oh. an awesome game. And yeah. thank you so much, Adira, for yes. being yeah. in chat for that. And also to all of our friends who have been supporting us uh, throughout uh, the run of this. We have five episodes left, y'all. And next week's game, uh, I'm just gonna say, is Max's pick, uh, and it's Bro. going to be a lot it's of fun. It's a family comedy. It is indeed a family what? comedy. <laughs> what? Yeah, it is that the family. Right. Yeah, it is the family comedy of our of our run. Uh, so if y'all are excited, uh, I mean, if you're not excited, get excited because it's Max's game next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah. before we finish, um, let's go ahead and go around the horn, and then I have a couple of announcements to make uh, after that. But um, how about uh, Amanda? Go ahead and introduce yourself and where people can find you. Hello, once again, I am Amanda. I am a delight. I like I like baseball, um, uh, and also Buffy. For the record, I stand with Charisma Carpenter. Hashtag. We all do. Um, yeah. And Ray Fisher. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you can find me on Twitter, is where I mostly live at Geek Powers. G E E K. Geek Powers. All right. Hey, and um, uh, Randy. Randy yeah. All right. I'm Randy Alvarenga. I, I thought that's where I was going. Um, uh, and you can catch me on Twitter at Roller Raja, R O L L E R R A J A. Um. And Max? Yeah. 
Max Isaacson. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter at Brosis Movies. That's B R O S I S Movies. Um, I'll be there tweeting about crap. <laughs> Uh, and everybody, I'm Aki. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mixed Genie in a Bottle. That's M X G I N I I N A B O T T L E. Uh, and I don't usually do this, but I'm doing it tonight mostly because uh, you have met the amazing Amanda Powers. And the fact that I get to do a show with her every week is freaking awesome. What you don't know is that starting on Friday, I have a show that I'm going to be starting with her uh, significant other, Colin, over on Indicade. Uh, uh, right. Starting uh, at 11 p.m. Uh, is it here? Can yeah. you pop in real fast? Yeah. Are you out? Oh. That's Colin. We're starting a show on Friday. <laughs> are, you, are you done? Are you so done? that's Colin. That's Colin. He and I are doing a show on Friday that's being produced by the same producer of this show, Dom. Uh, that starts at 11 a.m. on Friday over on the Indicate channel. We are going to be playing uh, Visigoths versus Molgoths uh, for our very first game. And it's going to be, uh, if you haven't guessed which goth, Colin is, is going to play just based on that gesture alone. I don't know what to tell you. Mm -hmm. um, but yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, the rest of my streaming schedule can be caught on my regular Twitch streaming uh, uh, channel. That's I Shidari think. Aki. S-H-I-D-A-R-E uh, A-K-I. And that's it. Uh, uh, for our initial uh, announcers, The Broken Pact, our official D&D show sponsored by Wizards of the Coast, returns this Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific, featuring the same crew that brought you Dice Ex Machina and some all new characters. So if you love Dungeons and Dragons, make sure you catch us on Monday night for that. Uh, right now, New Pantheon is on hiatus, but we should be back soon. Uh, we'll let you know uh, when on our social media. But until then, remember, you do not need a game master to have a good time. Just an awesome table of awesome friends and a good game. Thank you to everyone we'll who subbed and time. donated. Bye. We appreciate you. Yes. Thank you yes, so thank much. Thank you. And rated. Thank you. Bye.